This class is presented to you by Dr. Adam Cohen, teacher at the Turiya Ashram in India. This is Pawan Muktasana's Series 3. It is designed for the release of energy blocks within the body and is great for those associated with uh, the psychosomatic ailments which are related to the mental displacement of emotions and memories within the body. This is also a good postnatal practice. Begin the practice seated with the legs out in front. The first posture that we'll be doing is a rowing practice. <clears throat> it's called a rowing practice because it's very similar to the movements that you would make when rowing a boat. Keep the legs straight and together. Exhale as you reach the hands as far out towards the feet as you can, but keep the hands separated at about shoulder distance. Lean forward through the upper body, but don't cause any uncomfortable or awkward curves through the spine. Keep the spine in a nice, even, smooth curve. Then, as you inhale, raise back up to neutral seating. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the outside of the ribs with the palms facing down, right hand to the outside right rib, left hand to the outside left ribs. Then begin to tilt back through the upper body, going as far back as you can without compromising a straight spine. So keep the spine nice and straight. Then again, inhale back up to neutral. Then exhale, reach forward once again, extending the hands out in the direction of the space just outside the feet. Inhale back up to neutral, and then exhale as you tilt back. Following the breath, keeping the movement smooth and fluid, acting as though you're rowing a boat. Use the core on the backward movement to help support the straight spine. And then on the forward movement, release the core and allow it to compress into the forward bend. One more. Then you can release and relax. Next, separate the feet wide, about as wide as you can get them apart while keeping the legs straight. So legs separated, feet separated, legs straight. Next, hold the arms out to the side at shoulder level. Then exhale, twist to the right, and then extend the left hand down the outside of the right leg, reaching the hand out towards the toes. With the right hand, you can either place it on the ground beside or behind the right or the tailbone, or you can reach it up towards the sky if you're more flexible. Inhale back up to neutral, hold the arms out to the side shoulder level, then exhale twist left, now slide the right hand down the outside of the left leg, place the left hand on the ground behind the tailbone or up towards the sky behind the body, inhale back up to neutral. Alternating right and left, do not bend the knees when you come into the twist, keep the legs nice and straight, focus on the contraction and compression of the abdominal region when you move through the twist. Now relax and release. Coming into the arms, we're going to keep the legs straight and then bring them back together now. With the legs out in front, reach both arms up towards the sky. Then as you exhale, slowly begin to lower the hands down towards the thighs. Once the hands have touched the thighs, slide them down the front of the legs but keep the spine straight, shoulders back, and tilt through the pelvis as you lean forward. Then inhale, raise back up through the upper body, coming to a vertical with the spine. Then lift the arms up overhead towards the sky, reaching out through the fingertips, which is going to create a nice 90 degree angle between the upper body and lower body. Then again, exhale, drop the hands down, release them to the top of the thighs, slide the hands down the thighs towards the feet without curving the spine, then inhale back up to neutral, lifting the hands back up towards the sky. Two more of this practice.
Then you can release and relax. For the next practice, we're going to need to come to standing. To do this, bend the knees, place the bottoms of the feet on the ground just beyond the hips, bring the hands just behind the hips and then press into the ground and raise into standing, lifting from the tailbone to the head so you don't get dizzy from the lifting of the body. Next, separate the feet to about the width of your mat, so about one and a half to two feet apart, 50 centimeters or so. Exhale, lean forward, try to grasp the insides of the feet if you can. If you're not flexible enough, then just grasp the shins. Now we're going to move with the breath. As we inhale, we're going to squat the hips down as low as we can, keeping the arms along the inside of the legs as you squat down. Then exhale, lift the hips, raise them up towards the sky, and then extend into the forward bend. Okay, so moving with the breath, inhale as you squat the hips down, bending through the knees, keeping the arms along the inside of the legs, and then exhale, lift the hips, straighten the legs, and come as deep into the forward bend as you can with the hands either on the insides of the shins or uh, grasping the inner arches of the feet. Just a few more of this practice now, moving with the breath, Then you can release and relax. Come back up to standing, all the way up now with the spine lifted and just a natural neutral standing posture. From here we're going to work into an upper body rotation. Feet separated at hips distance or a little bit wider. Then rotate the whole upper body from the hips but don't move the position of the hips from the, or the lower body from the hips all the way down towards the feet. Which means on the forward movement, you're gonna bend into the forward bend with upper body, then you're gonna rotate out to the right, stretching through the left side body, and then you're gonna arch back, coming into a back bend with the upper body, and then you're gonna arch to the left, and then you're gonna again roll forward into the forward bend. Then once you come to the forward bend, go in the opposite direction. Arch out to the left, then go into the back bend, and then go to the right, and then go into the forward bend, and then opposite direction. Just two more complete rounds on each side. Rotating fully, try to keep the movement smooth and even. If you want to move with the breath, inhale as you lift into the back bend, exhale as you lower into the forward bend. Then, once you've finished, release, bring the feet together, and back to neutral standing pose. From the neutral standing position, you're going to bring the hands to prayer. Straight line from elbow to elbow now, with the line being formed by the forearms. Hands right at prayer at the heart. As you exhale, step the right foot back, straight back from its current position, about two feet. Bend through the left knee and let the left knee be right above the left ankle and the right knee is going to lower towards the earth. Simultaneously, you're going to twist through the upper body towards the left, bringing the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Then raise back to standing, step the right foot next to the left and come back to neutral. Now let's go to the opposite side. Step the left foot back, straight back, about two feet or so. Drop the knee towards the earth as you bend through the right knee, twist to the right, bring the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, deepen through the twist, look over your right shoulder, and then come back to neutral, stepping the left foot next to the right. Alternating right and left, twisting through the upper body, working through the legs, just a few more rounds, contracting through the abdomen to ensure the activation of the solar plex, the energy center in the abdomen. One more on each side. Okay. 
before relaxing and releasing. That concludes part of the Pawan Muktasana Series 3. From here, you can either continue with another practice or come to resting on your back for several minutes in Shavasana, corpse pose, before continuing with your physical activity. Namaste. You can find more free resources on yoga, including videos, audios, and articles on our website, studyofyoga.org. We believe that spiritual knowledge can change the world and bring forth a new path for humanity to become integrally connected to themselves and the world in which they live. Therefore, all materials we provide are available for free. However, if you would like to make a donation to help us expand our collection of resources as well as support our community projects in India, please contact us at info at studyofyoga.org. That's I-N-F-O at studyofyoga.org. Your contributions are nourishment for the lives of others who share a vision for a more peaceful and holistically unified future. Thank you for listening. May you be a light unto the world so that the glory of truth and wisdom may shine in the hearts of all.